Constellations are like a map, and you only need to know just a little bit about them to have a much more enjoyable understanding of the night sky. Taurus is a zodiac constellation, and it pretty much follows the ecliptic, so it travels on the same path that the sun and the moon do. Here's where and when to find Taurus and what this constellation brings to the night sky. Taurus is a winter constellation. So what this means is he is best seen primarily during the winter months on the east side where he is rising as it gets as dusk comes and as the stars show up. So he's pretty easy to spot um, once you get used to it because he has a very distinct V shape right here, which is um, very interesting in itself. The asterism we can use to find it is Orion's belt. Orion is a very common constellation, so I'm sure you can spot him pretty easily. He also shows up during the winter months. If you draw a line through his belt, you can kind of get, you know, you kind of get this star here, which is part of that V shape of the constellation of Taurus. So what does it look like? Well, let's jump on over to my picture of Taurus. All right, let's enhance this puppy, brighten him a little bit, <laughs> or should I say this bowl. Um, this is a picture I took with a just a four second shutter speed, um, four second exposure. After I bumped up the contrast and, and whatnot, the colors a, a little bit, you can see some more stars than, are, than were easily visible with the naked eye. When you're actually looking at the stars without any you know, camera or telescope, then you can see the bright stars pretty easily, and that's why, you know, constellations they're generally easy to find so I'm drawing the constellation lines here I have seen them done different ways and in fact the app I use Starwalk 2 um, has them done differently they include a line coming up kind of out in the middle um, going up to the Pleiades and all this area counts as Taurus constellations are not just you know the lines we see they are they are really kind of state borders if you will in the sky the constellations take up the entire sky. So if we're looking for something, we can say it's in the constellation Taurus. That might not mean that it's directly next to one of these stars, but it's in the area where Taurus is, is um, you know, kind of what he claims, his territory. Each constellation have their, their state line, so to speak, in the sky. The Pleiades and the Hyades are two open star clusters. In fact, they are the most common open star clusters, the most well-known. And they are both in the constellation Taurus. We'll start here with um, the Hyades. It is a, a fairly big one, easily to see with the naked eye, because it is essentially the V shape of Taurus's head. That is a cluster of stars that are all fairly close to each other, with one exception, the bullseye. Aldebaran is the name of this star right here, which is the center, you know, it's the eye of the bull. And so he looks like he's in the the open star cluster of the Hyades, but he's actually much closer to us. He just happened to be in the way. But it, that is a cool star in itself. It is the brightest star in the constellation of Taurus. And there's a little bit of debate about this, but there is some evidence to suggest that Aldebaran might have an exoplanet. In other words, a planet that is orbiting it like, you know, like planets do. It, w it is likely to be a gas giant like Jupiter, probably probably bigger than Jupiter. But anyway, it seems that we don't know for sure. Uh, we f they find this out by measuring. They, they can see that the, the dimness, the brightness of the stars change as they look through it through telescopes. But there are different things that can cause this. It's, it's not always an exoplanet. And there seems to be some doubt. Anyway, it may or may not be there. It's kind of a cool little fun fact. If it is there, that would be cool. So... That's the bright star in Taurus. Now we have a few deep space objects, deep sky objects in this constellation, as I mentioned, the Hyades being one of them, but you go a little further out and you can find the Pleiades star cluster or M45. Yes, the Pleiades, also called M45, also called the Seven Sisters. Open star clusters, um, there, are two, there are a few kinds of star clusters. There are also globular clusters where the stars are close enough together that their gravitational fields have more of a pull on each other. Open star clusters have weak connection and they can oftentimes, you know, a star can leave and can be pulled out by um, a huge cloud of stellar dust or whatever and they can be more changing. But but what, this, what we're saying is there's a bunch of stars in a similar neighborhood of each other. And uh, 
the Pleiades is a really cool one, the Seven Sisters. So just to give you some idea of the scale, the closest star, the closest sun to Earth, <laughs> besides the sun, let me rephrase that, the closest sun to our solar system outside of it is Proxima Centauri, which is about four light years away. It takes four years for light to come from there to here. Still a long ways, but nothing compared to what it could be. The closest star cluster, which I already mentioned is the Hyades, is 153 light years away. Comparatively, the Pleiades that we also talked about is 444 light years, so that's also pretty close because when you consider that the closest galaxy to our galaxy, which is the Andromeda galaxy, that is still 2.5 million light years away. Much further than the Hyades, much further than the Pleiades, much further than Proxima Centauri, um, which is, by the way, seen in the southern, atmosphere, southern hemisphere. So if you're in the northern hemisphere like I am, the closest star to us is Sirius, and he is in the dog constellation. Um, I, and I believe Sirius is eight, yeah, eight, eight light years away from us. So the sheer scale is just unimaginable, but yeah, I don't know, it's crazy, it's mind blowing. I, that's all there is to it. So those are some of the objects that you can find in Taurus. There are one other thing that I think is kind of interesting is um, brief, brief backstory, Charles Messier was an, an astronomer who was looking for comets. I think it's funny because he made a huge catalog of everything he found that wasn't a comet. So we have the Messier catalog, um, and that's why we have these M designations. Um, M45, the Pleiades, that's the 45th on his list. So M1, first thing on that list that wasn't a comet was the Crab Nebula. And this is a nebula that is found near Taurus, near one of his horns, and it is a supernova remnant. It just so happens that Chinese astronomers witnessed this star go supernova in 1054 and it created a new star next to Taurus's one of his horns. Um, it, was, it was a guest star. It only it lasted for about two years and was potentially even seen during the day. That's how bright it was. But now we can't see it um, with the unaided eye. We can, if you get a telescope, you can see the remnant, the, the supernova remnant, which is kind of a cool looking nebula that I guess supposedly kind of re resembles a crab. So that is M1. It is in this area, but again, you need a telescope. So to recap, within the constellation Taurus, you have its brightest star, which is Aldebaran, which is Arabic for the follower. It follows the Pleiades across the night sky, which is also in the constellation Taurus, M45. Along with M45, we have M1, the Crab Nebula, and of course, we also have the Hyades. And the Hyades was not cataloged by Charles Mezier, I imagine because you know, it's so big and close, it's not easy, it's not hard to not mistake it for a comet. Um, but that is another another interesting feature in Taurus. Those are just some of, those are the top four that kind of stood out to me that I like to look for as I am scanning the night sky. Um, I believe there are some other things you can find in Taurus, but that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for spending some time with me and listening to me rant about the skies. I sure love them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love astronomy, I love art, and I love learning new things. And I, I was so excited at this idea that I had to bring all these things together into a video and I hope to make more just like this as I learn more about the night sky and constellations. So if you're interested in joining me along with this journey this year, hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you next time. I hope that you too can remember to do things that you enjoy, have a good day, and remember to smile.